This will be Genesis chapter 23. And Genesis chapter 23 is about the death of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Something interesting is in chapter 24, you have the story of Isaac, Abraham's son. And in chapter 24, Isaac is getting his bride, Rebekah. And if Isaac is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, then Rebekah pictures the bride of Christ, which is the church. Abraham is a picture of God the Father, so Abraham, Abraham's wife, Sarah, would be a picture of Israel. And since she dies in chapter 23, right before Isaac gets his bride, these two chapters are a great illustration of Israel and our current dispensation. You see, right now, Israel is dead spiritually. They're blind in part. And God is dealing with with Gentiles and the bride. Israel at this moment is blind in part. They're asleep. God isn't dealing with Israel at this moment. Sarah dying right before Isaac gets his bride is a picture of that. The, because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, remember? And they temporarily put to the side, God temporarily put to the side the Jews, the nation of Israel, as he deals with the church, the bride of Christ. So in chapter 23, you got Abraham's wife, Sarah, who's a picture of Israel. You have her dying. And then in chapter 24, it starts talking about Isaac getting, Isaac being a type of Jesus Christ, getting his bride, Rebekah. In chapter 23 and verse 1, it says, And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah is 127 years old. And this would make Isaac around 37 years old if she had Isaac at 90 years of age. So Isaac would be around 37 years old. So Sarah dies at the age of 127 years old. Abraham lives on to be 175 years old. So if Isaac is around 37 years old and he doesn't even have his bride yet, that puts him almost to be a 40-year-old virgin. And I, I'm not sure exactly when he got his bride, but uh, the world paints being a 40-year-old virgin as a bad thing. I always, I'm always disgusted at that. When, when somebody acts like, you know, when they find out somebody's a virgin, they look at them like they're a nerd or a dork or something. That's ridiculous. Uh, see, the devil paints a pretty picture and makes it look like it's a good thing for you to lose your virginity. or your. The more people that you've been with, the cooler you are. That's completely ridiculous, and that goes completely against the Bible. But Sarah, she dies at the age of 127 years old. Abraham lives on to be 175 years old. So this means that Abraham lives a whole, you know, 30, 38, about 38 years longer. If he was about 137 here when, when she died, he, he goes on to live, you know, 30, 30, uh, 38 more years, 48 more years, something like that. And that's a long time to live without your spouse that you've had. If you've lost a spouse, I can't say I understand that because I don't, but this could give you comfort. Comfort. Abraham made it another 38 years. And if he made it, then you can make it. If he made it 30-something more years. In Genesis 23, 2, it says, And Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan, and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. It's a natural thing to mourn and weep when you lose your wife. Even though you know they are no longer suffering, they're no longer in this present evil world, and that you will see them again, it is still natural to mourn and weep. But weeping is only temporary, and you will see them again. Remember that part. As it talks about in 1 Thessalonians 4, it says in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Them which are asleep are the saints who have already died and gone to heaven. 
Don't stay in sorrow for them because there is hope. We don't sorrow like a lost person who has no hope of seeing their loved one again. You see, a lost man has no hope after his wife dies. He has no assurance of ever seeing her again. But if you and your wife are saved, then you will see each other again. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 about the rapture prove that. So say these verses to yourselves for comfort. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In Genesis 23, 3, it says, And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, So Abraham stood up from before his dead. Notice that phrase. Abraham stood up from before his dead. He didn't let it keep him down. His wife just died. And I believe your spouse would want you to carry on for the Lord. Stand up and keep going. But Abraham says to the sons of Heth, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. So like Abraham, you are a stranger and a sojourner. This world isn't your home. You're just passing through. This world wasn't your spouse's home. Uh, they were just passing through. They just made it home a little bit quicker than you did. This isn't over. This isn't the end of the story. Sometimes me and my wife uh, drive different cars and meet each other in town because, you know, I've been at work and maybe she went to go get my daughter from school. We then meet up to go out to eat or something. Sometimes I'll go grab something from the store, but she will head on home. There's no need to worry because I know she will be home when I get there, Lord willing. Uh, seeing your saved spouse in heaven is even more sure than that. You know, you're sure that your spouse is going to be home when you get there from work or wherever else. Uh, if you're both saved, then meeting up again is a sure thing. It's even more sure than that my wife would be home when I get there. Something could stop her from being there when I get home. However, nothing can stop you from seeing your wife in heaven if you're both saved. In Genesis 23, 4, it says, I'm a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I, might bear, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. So this, the burial is an important thing. Everyone needs a proper burial. It's not only uh, good and right for the one who is dead, but it's also good for closure to the person who's still alive. It says in Ecclesiastes 6, 3, If a man beget an hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his life be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. The Bible talks a lot about the burial. Also remember that the burial is part of the picture. I mean, when you think about the resurrection... I mean, you had to have the, the, the burial. You die, you're buried, but then you resurrect. <clears throat> now, no matter where you are, whether you know, somebody was cremated or just ate by a shark or something, God's still going to resurrect their bodies. But, I mean, you just want it to go, you want it to match the picture. Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and he resurrected. And in Genesis 23, 5 through 6, And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. And the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold thee, hold from thee his sepulcher, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. So Abraham was considered a mighty prince among them. This shows that Abraham had a testimony among these people. He would no doubt want to keep that testimony. So you're going to notice in this conversation, that's what he does. Abraham handles the situation perfectly. They're going to let Abraham have any sepulcher that he wants. It says in verse 7, And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field for as much money as it is worth he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place among you so he wants to get the cave of Machpelah for a burying place he wants to get it from Ephron the son of Zohar and he's willing to pay for it he's not trying to get a free handout he's not trying to steal it he's not trying to get it trickily like 
you know, like Ahab tried to get, uh, he tried to get the field, you know, uh, he's trying to get it the right way. It's always good and right to pay your way to get things honestly. Abraham is going to keep his testimony. Even in a hard time, it's always the best thing to offer to pay your way if you can. Even if it is as simple as giving someone money for a ride. Over the years, I've, I've gave tons of free rides back and forth to work to people. The average person doesn't offer to pay for gas, and even if they do, they never go through with giving it to me. If I've ever gotten a ride, I make the person take the money. It can be awkward for some people, and they won't take the money unless you basically put it in their wallet. So I just throw it in their ride and leave it. You're going to see the conversation between Ephron and Abraham. They both show the proper courtesy. Ephron is going to offer the K for free, which is a decent thing to do. Abraham is going to offer to pay, which is a decent thing to do. They both know Abraham is going to pay, but it's common courtesy to have the conversation that they have. So it says, And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the high tide answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of the city, saying, Now notice this is in front of the audience of the people. Abraham is going to keep his testimony in front of all this audience of the children of Heth. And it says in verse 11, Nay, my Lord, hear me, the field give I thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee. And the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee, bury thy dead. So Ephron's telling Abraham, just take it. He doesn't even, he's not even asking him to pay for the cave. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land, and he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. So Abraham comes back and says, No, no, no. Please take the money from me that the field is worth. Then, and Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My Lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. So the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. Abraham ends up giving him four hundred shekels of silver. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. So notice it says current money money like currency see the bible is not outdated and the field of ephron which was in machpelah which was before memory the field and the cave which was therein and all the trees that were in the field that were in all the borders round about were made sure it was in it was he had insurance on it It was made sure unto abraham for a possession in the presence of the son of the children of heth he kept his testimony and it was uh, that was it being in front of all those people was also like insurance on it. And it, was, it says before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, got him some closure there, got a proper burial in the cave of the field of Machpelah before memory, the same as Hebron and the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a bearing place by the sons of Heth. So the field and the cave were made sure. Abraham had title insurance on it. It was made sure because there were witnesses. It was made sure because Sarah was buried there. You know, she got the proper burial. He got the closure. Now he can stand up. He can go on to live for the Lord. And he's got his, his dead buried out of his sight. He can go on to live for the Lord. And I believe that's what Sarah would have wanted him to, be, to do. And if you've lost a spouse, I believe that's what they would want you to do. Go on to live for the Lord and take comfort in the fact that you will see them again.